In this video, we're going to look at concurrent validity, which indicates the amount of agreement between two different assessments. So, for example, there might be a new bit of kit out, one that uh, measures jump height, and so we want to compare that new bit of kit against the gold standard or reference methods, which has already had its validity established and, and, and proven to be a very good method indeed. So, how do we do that? Uh, how do we run that analysis? Well, you'd think you'd run a correlation, but we'd have to note that a correlation really only tells us of the strength of a linear relationship between the two variables. It doesn't really inform us about its, its uh, agreement. And for it to show perfect agreement, the correlation would have to equal one, and the slope would have to run at this 45 degree angle, because you can see a change in one unit on one method would be equivalent to a change in one unit on the other method. But you can still get a correlation of one and have this variety of slopes, which therefore now don't show the perfect agreement or perfect matching scores. We kind of want to rotate this figure then 45 degrees, and you end up with something that looks like this, and that's going to be our Bland and Altman plots are our limits of agreement analysis. And so we're going to uh, plot the difference between the paired scores on the y-axis and the mean of the scores on the x-axis. And we can look at these data points and, and determine whether 95% of them lie within 95% limits of agreement. And we can also use this plot to determine the systematic bias. So I'm going to show you how to produce this plot and how to determine um, whether there is systematic bias or not. And again, on the same plot, we can also run our ordinary least products regression analysis. And, and we can use that analysis to see if the 95% confidence intervals for the intercept include zero or not, which might be indicative of fixed bias or if the 95% confidence intervals for the slope includes one, which might be indicative of proportional bias. So we look to see how to run these analyses to give us an idea of concurrent validity. So here's our data. So it would be collected concurrently. Okay, so hence concurrent validity. So if there was um, perfect agreement, you'd expect the difference between these two scores to be zero. So this difference is simply calculated as the reference method minus the, the new method. And you expect it to be zero, but actually you'd acknowledge that random error and variation lives in within every measurement we will ever take. So it might not always be zero. There might be sometimes where this score is higher and other times where this score is higher. But what you would then expect is the, the mean, the average of these scores to equal zero. But it doesn't. And because it doesn't, we say that there is some systematic bias. And this value here tells us that the new method overestimates jump height by around 0.5 centimeters. So again, just to calculate that difference, it's just this um, value minus this one here. The other um, value that we need to calculate to, to produce these bland ornament plots is the the mean of the two methods, which is simply, simply the average um, of the two scores. So of course you've got the difference here, the average here, and if you were to drag it down, you'd, you'd get all this data. This is simply the average, as you can see there, the average there. And then to, to calculate the uh, upper limits of agreement and lower limits of agreement, well, first we need the standard deviation. So there's the function there. and the 95% limits of agreement, or 95% of a normal distribution would be calculated as 1.96 multiplied by the standard deviation. And of course, to calculate the upper limit is the mean plus this 95% uh, limit of agreement. So the standard deviation multiplied by 1.96 and to get the lower limit of agreement, well now it's the mean minus 1.96 multiplied by the standard deviation. So this is the first bit of data that we need and we're going to generate the plots now and I'm going to do that in SPSS. And first thing I need to do though is just make sure we do have normally distributed data. If, if 
for this uh, for these difference values. So we go analyze, descriptive explore, put the difference in plots, and I just want to tick this one here. Normally plots with tests. So we can re read off the Shapiro rules. You can see it's more than 0 0.05. Therefore, we do have normally distributed data. Great. So let's go ahead and draw the graphs. We're going graphs, legacy, and scatter plots. Define. I'm going to stick the difference on the y-axis and mean on the x-axis, and press OK. So here we go. Here's our um, Bland and Altman plot, the start of it at least. We're going to fix it up a little bit now. I'm just going to open this up into a separate window. And obviously, let me click on this. I'm going to need these values uh, here. This one and this one. So I need to see these scores here basically. So first of all, let me um, fix it up a little bit. So let me just hide these grid lines. Now I just want to add these values in uh, quite simply. So I'm going to go first of all and click on this um, uh, y axis reference line. And I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to have to zero in to, to highlight the um, uh, systematic bias more clearly. I'll just change the weight of this. I'll put that up to uh, 1.5. And I'm going to go apply. Close. In fact, I'm going to rule do this because I'll make it dash line. Close right now. I want to go and do the same thing and put my other values in now. So I got my reference. If, if I click on the mean, you'll see I'll get the same value anyway. Great. I'm going to apply that lines. I'm just going to choose now for this to all be in green. Press apply. Close. I then want another one. If I now go and cross all this out. I go into my upper limit of agreement, so 7.8522. Apply, I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to go 1.5 green, apply. And let's put the last one in now, the lower limit of agreement. Okay, so there's our bland and normal. You can see this difference here represents a systematic bias, which was um, half a centimeter. And these are our upper and lower limits. And you can already see that 95% of the scores land within the limits of agreement. So there's no systematic bias between these two methods. I'm just going to go and do the uh, add in the um, regression line. Now, so put these out. Put my. It's already on linear by default. We could add in the ninety-five percent confidence intervals. I'll get rid of the the label attached to it. Apply. I think actually we'll we'll change the color as well, just to make it a bit clearer on the graph. See there's our scores. In fact, I'll change the the color on that as well. So there we are. It's quite nice to to read, and we can cut and paste that into our our work. But what we want to know is whether the 95% confidence interval for the intercept uh, contains zero. If they don't contain zero, there's fixed bias. And we also want to do the same for the slope. And if 
95% confidence interval don't contain one and is proportional by it. So let's go and do that. I'm going to go back into our SPSS for that. Okay, analyze regression linear linear difference. What does that mean? Statistics. We want a confidence intervals. Continue. And here we go. Look. So the first thing to note, this is the um, correlation for that slope for the regression line that we just drew, which say was over here. And you can see it's a negative correl uh, correlation, um, but it's also non-significant, which is great. We don't want to correlate. We want that line to be as straight as possible. So it's non-significant, which is great. But these are the values that we want here, the 95% confidence intervals, which I've got here. So we've got the intercept here and the slope. And you, you can see that this does indeed contain zero. This does indeed contain one. So there's no systematic bias and there's no fixed or proportional bias. So there is good agreement uh, between these two methods. So this was our, um, assessment for concurrent validity and it has passed.